In this video, we're going to look at Venn diagrams. A Venn diagram can be a very useful way to represent information. Um, I'm going to start off by showing you a couple of examples of quite straightforward Venn diagram questions, and then I'm going to uh, show you a lot of the important notation that you'd use in more complicated questions, particularly whenever you're uh, dealing with probability. Okay, so we've got the symbol. This symbol is a letter in the Greek alphabet, it's xi, and it represents a universal set. It means all the data that you're interested in in the question. And these curly brackets, they're sets. If you go to Corporate Mavs, you can watch the videos on that. Okay, so here we've got uh, xi. It says the set of information that we're interested in is the numbers 1, 16. And then we've got this uh, a is equal to the multiples of 3, so a is defined as the multiples of 3. B is defined as the multiples of four, and we've been asked to complete the Venn diagram. So this is a Venn diagram. You've got a circle that represents A. You've got a circle that represents B. They overlap in case there's anything that satisfies both A and B. And then you've got a rectangle around the outside. That rectangle around the outside is very important. Don't forget that, okay? Because it means that if anything's not in A and B, it can go in that box to represent that it's not in A or B. Okay, so this is complete the Venn diagram. So A is the multiples of three. So let's write down what the multiples of three are between one and 16. So that would be three, six, nine, 12, 15. And the multiples of four would be four, eight, 12, and 16. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put these into the Venn diagram. So let's first of all start off with the middle of the Venn diagram. So this section here would be anything that's in A and in B. So it would be a number that's a multiple of three and a multiple of four. Now if you look at both of this, 12 clearly satisfies that. So we're gonna put 12 in the middle because 12 is a multiple of three and it's a multiple of four. So it's in A and B. This section here would be anything that's just in A but not in B, okay? So anything else is a multiple of three. So let's put our three, our six, our nine, and our 15 in there. Okay, um, this section here, that would be anything that's a multiple of four, but it's not a multiple of three. Okay, so that'd be the rest of the multiples of four, so that'd be four, eight, and 16. And around the outside, that'd be any other number that we um, haven't got in the diagram so far. So anything that's not a multiple of three or a multiple of four. So we'll, let's put in our one, two, we've got three, four, then it'd be five, we've got six, seven, we've got eight, we've got nine, 10, 11, we've got 12, 13, 14, we've got 15 and 16. That's it. Uh, but whenever you do an event diagram question, I always recommend you check you've got all the numbers or all the data. So let's, we've got the numbers one to 16. So we've got 16 numbers. So one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So we've got 16 numbers in there. So that's it, we've completed the question. So that's a Venn diagram, okay? It's 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 how you, it's quite a straightforward Venn diagram question. Uh, we've put in the numbers in A, the numbers in B, the middle section where they overlap, so anything that's in A and B, and anything on the outside is anything that's not A or B. Okay, let's have a look at another question. The Venn diagram shows information about the drinks that some students like. Okay, so some students were surveyed and this is the type of drinks they like. The first question says, how many students do not like tea or coffee? Okay, so if you can see here, the first circle here is anyone that likes tea. So these 13 people and these eight people all like tea. The eight, well, it's both tea and coffee. So these eight people like tea and coffee because obviously they're in both circles. This, these seven here, they just like coffee, but they don't like tea. And the two people outside, well, they don't like tea or coffee. So the first question says, how many students do not like tea or coffee? Well, it's gonna be these two students here. So that's gonna be two. Next question says, how many students like tea and coffee? So because it's and, it means they like tea and coffee, it's gonna be the people in the middle that like tea and coffee, so there's eight students that like tea and coffee. Next question, how many students like tea? Well, obviously we've got these two uh, numbers here. We've got our 13 and our eight, and they're both in the circle for tea. So if we add them together, we'll see how many people like tea altogether. Well, 13 plus eight is 21. And that's it, so that's how many people like tea. We've got the 13 people that like just tea, and we've got the eight people that like tea and coffee. So all together, there's 21 people that like tea. The next question says, how many people like coffee? So if we look at the coffee circle, we've got the eight and the seven inside. If we add them together, there's 15 people that like coffee altogether. The next question says, how many students are in the class? Well, if we add all the numbers together in the Venn diagram, we'll see how many people are in the class. So we've got 13 plus eight, which is 21 plus seven, which is equal to 28, plus two, which is equal to 30. So there's 30 people in the class. 
Next, how many students like tea but not uh, but they do not like coffee? Okay, so the people that like tea and not coffee would be these 13 people here because they're in the tea circle but they're not in the coffee circle. Okay, so it'd be 13. And the next question is how many students like coffee but not tea? Well, if you look at the coffee circle, that'd be the seven. Seven people like coffee, but not tea. So the, the, we're sort of getting used to sort of reading Venn diagrams and, and understanding how to approach understanding what the numbers mean. Okay, so the next example says, in a class of 24 students, 12 played the piano, 13 students played the guitar, and four students play neither instrument. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill in the Venn diagram to begin with, and then we're gonna be able to answer the question, how many students play the guitar only? Okay, so first of all, let's put the four students that play neither instrument outside. Now this 12 that play the piano, that's the whole circle, okay? And 13 that play the guitar, that's the whole circle here, okay? Now we don't know which number's in the middle, so we can't just quickly fill out these three numbers, but what we, we can actually from the information we've been given. Because we know there's 24 students all together, we can use one of the numbers, so let's just look at the 12, and we know that in the piano circle, this whole circle here, we know that there's going to be 12 students. So let's just put a 12 in there for now, okay? And we also know the four play, play an either instrument. So we know there's 12 there and there's four there. Now that's 16. Now altogether there's 24 students. Now there's only ever going to be four numbers to add together in this in this question. We've got uh, these two here, this one and this one, but well, they're 12 altogether. The one that we don't know and the four. So if we do 12 plus four, that's 16. Well, if we add on eight, we're gonna get the 24. So that means that this section here, the bit that's only guitar is eight. Actually, that answers our question, eight. Let's just fill in the rest of the Venn diagram anyway, okay? So let's rub out the 12 now, and let's work out the two other numbers in the Venn diagram, okay? The bit in the middle, and the bit that's piano only. Now, we know that 13 play the guitar, so that's that whole circle here. Now, if there's eight there, that means that the five is in the middle to make 13, So because five plus eight is 13. Now we know it's 5 in the middle, and we know that 12 play the piano, that's this whole circle here is 12, if we know it's 5 there, that's going to put 7 on that side. That's it, we've filled in the Venn diagram. And just to go through the question again, it says how many students only play the guitar? Well that's the uh, the guitar circle, but the bit uh, that's not in the middle, so that's it. That's it. We're now going to look at some notation that you might encounter whenever you're doing a Venn diagram question. So if we've already seen A, okay, so if you have a circle here in the Venn diagram that's labelled A, anything inside it will be part of the set A. Uh, next, inside of B is obviously B. Now, an A with a, uh, a dash like this, that means the complement of A, all right? And that means not A. So it means anything that is not inside the A circle. So, well, we're oval in this question. So here you've got the circle of the region for A. Anything outside of it would be A dash, which is the complement of A. Likewise, B dash would be the complement of B. So anything outside of B. Now, A and this U and then B means A union B. And it means anything that's in A or B, all right? So anything in the A circle or the B circle would satisfy or be part of the group or the set A union B. So A union B is anything in A or B. I like to sort of consider the word or whenever I see that. And finally, A and then an N and then a B. It's not like a an N, it's like a, it's the shape, okay, the symbol. A, the symbol B, would be A intersect B. It means anything that's in A and B, okay? So anything it would be in the middle region, okay? So A intersect B is anything that's A and B. Okay, let's have a look at some questions. So here's a Venn diagram. A number is chosen at random from this Venn diagram. Find the probability of each of the following. So let's see how many numbers in the Venn diagram to begin with. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven numbers, and the first one says, what's the probability of, uh, of getting C? Or uh, what's the probability the number chosen is from C? So there's one, two, three, four, five in C. So it's gonna be five out of seven, five sevens. Probably if D, well, there's one, two, three numbers in D, so that'd be three sevenths. The probability of the complement of C, or the probability of C dash, means the probability of not C. So it means what's the chance of picking a number that is not in C? So we've got five numbers in C, but these two numbers, the seven and the two, are part of C dash, or the complement of C. So it's gonna be two out of seven. 
next the probability of d dash so that means it, there's the probability of the complement of d or any number that's not in the d circles so there's one two three four that's not in the d circles so it's going to be four out of seven next one what's the probability of c union d so the probability of c union d is anything that's in c or d so there's one, two, three, four, five, six numbers in the C or D circles. So there's going to be six sevenths. And finally, what's the probability of C intersect D? In other words, the middle region, anything that's in C and D. So there's two numbers there, so it's going to be two out of seven, two sevenths. Right, so our second last example, here's a Venn diagram, and a number is chosen at random from the numbers in the Venn diagram. Find the probability of each of the following. So the first one, what's the probability of the complement of C intersect the complement of D? In other words, what's the probability of not C and not D? Well, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight numbers in this Venn diagram, so it's going to be eight in the denominator, and not C and not D, well, that's going to be the two numbers on the outside, so that's going to be two eighths or one quarter. Next, what's the probability of C uh, union not D? So that means what's the probability of C or not D? So that means anything that's in C or not D will satisfy it. So C will be these four numbers and not D, well that's going to be these two and these three. We've already got these three already. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. It's going to be these six numbers. This one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. These four, because it's union, it means that we're going to accept any of them. So it's going to be anything in this circle or anything outside of the D circle. So the only two that we're not going to be looking at will be the 10 and the 9. So it's going to be 6 over 8, and that's equal to 3 quarters. Right, so the last part of this question says, what's the probability of the complement of C union the complement of D? In other words, what's the probability of not C or not D? Now, because it's union, it means that it's either one of them. Okay, so if it's not C or not D, that it's it's part of the, it's accepted. So not C. Well, not C. Let's take it. Would be that number, that number, the ten, the nine, the fifteen, or the nineteen. Not D. Well, not D would be the fifteen and nineteen again, but also the one, the two, and the four. So the probability of uh, not C or not D would be any of the numbers that we've ticked. So it's going to be seven over eight. And our last question. So the last question says, a P test has two sections, a theory test and a practical test. Everyone in the class who took the P test passed at least one section. So it means that everyone's passed at least either the theory or the practical or both. It says that 70% passed the theory section. So in other words, we know the 70% in this circle. There's gonna be 70 in here. It says 81% passed the, uh, the practical section. So we know there's 81 in this circle. And it says, represent this information on the Venn diagram. Now, to begin with, we know that nobody failed uh, both sections. So let's put zero on the outside. Now, this might seem a bit difficult because we don't have very much information to find out what's in the middle. But actually, we do have enough information. We know that there's four numbers all together in this Venn diagram that we would have. We'd have this number, this one, this one, and the zero. All right, now we know they must add up to 100%. So it must mean that this, this number plus this number plus this number would be 100. Also, we know that the 70% inside the theory section. Uh, so that means that inside this circle would be 70%. So there would be 70 in here. That must mean there would be 30 there. We could have looked at it the other way. We could have looked at the 81 for the practical section and worked at that. And then we could, could have worked that out, but that's, that's just the same, same thing. Okay, it says that 81% passed the practical section. Now, inside this practical uh, section, we know there's 81%. Well, if we've got 30 here, that must mean we would have 51 in the middle, because that would mean 81 in the whole circle. And finally, because we know it's going to be 100%, 30, 51's 81, leaves us 19 there. And just checking they add up together to give us the 70%. So we've completed the Venn diagram. Now, the next question is very important. It's a given that question. It says a student is selected at random. Work out the probability that the person passed the test, or sorry, with, uh, work out the probability that this person passed the theory section given that they've passed the practical section. So first of all, we know that this person has passed the practical section, okay? So we know that we're inside this circle, they've passed the practical section, so we're only really considering these two numbers here, okay? It says, what's the probability that they've passed the theory section? So the theory section would be this 51. So it's gonna be 51, 
out of the 81 that's inside this circle that's inside that circle so the answer would be 51 out of 81 and that's it